Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and we're in the data module. We've had five lessons so far, so if you're just here, uh, come back and take a look at those lessons. We saw data in general and information, and we saw how to get uh, data from an HTML form into a server script and into the database, and then back again into a results page. So uh, that was cool. We saw this results page. Here we are on the canvas with a similar type form. But what if you just want to submit the form and not see a results page, but rather have the message come back without reloading the page? So uh, that is quite common these days. And there's a thing called Ajax, uh, which does that, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Although you don't have to use XML. That was like 10, 20 years ago, 20 years probably, where XML was the big thing. These days, we often use JSON to get data back and forth. And there's another thing like Ajax called JSONP. It's um, a slightly different system to be able to do the same thing. And it does it in the, on the get. And we use that in Zim. We also use Ajax in Zim. So we'll see those when we come look at the Zim examples. But right now, we're taking a look at an HTML form. The back end is the same, which is exciting. So we're taking a look at an HTML form. We're going to do the same thing here. First, a reminder, if we don't put in a name, we're popping up a message bar there. If we do put in a name, uh, Zaza. Za, za! Exclamation mark. There we go. Got 47 and submit. Thanks, sport. So we're popping up the same uh, pop up in a sense, but with a different color and a different message in there. And note, we didn't go to the results page. So in the past, we went to a results page, something like this. Here, we're staying on the same page and seeing the message come back. Great. So let's have a look at the code, see how we do that. Right, we're in the ajax.html, and this is the same as the, the HTML DOM form that we looked through in a previous video, so we won't spend too much time, uh, but we'll do a quick review. Here's the styles for that. We Here's some JavaScript, so the JavaScript will change. There's the Ajax stuff that we're going to go through. And then down underneath, we have the HTML form. And let's see, uh, what we're interested in here is the inputs, input, input, input. This one has a name of name, a name of count, and a name of color right here. So that's our HTML form, and then the submit button. And here's our div message down below with nothing in it. All right, let's go up to the JavaScript then. Have a peek in here, we'll zoom in a bit. Uh, zoom out, we'll zoom in. <laughs> zoom in, zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. Right, we're waiting for our DOM content to load. That Make sure the tags are loaded, and then we're gaining access to our tags. The, uh, the name, the count, and the color there. When the color changes, we change the color of the background. When we submit on the uh, submit button. When we click on the submit button, we're calling this JavaScript right here, and there's access to our message uh, holder down below or a little pop-up window thing. All right, we collect the event object there and we stop that from going any further. So, oh, that's uh, one thing. Let's pop down and take a look at the form. So come back in just a sec. The form, the form, the form. Here it is. Almost missed it because it's so simple now. So we don't actually need to send to a PHP page here or use get or post or anything here in the form because we're going to do that with Ajax. Uh, come on up. Uh, here we are. So we're stopping any further motion. We have a, if the name is nothing, so if they haven't entered anything in the name, then we're calling a pop-up function. Now before we had all of the JavaScript for the pop-up right in here, but now we've got to call the pop-up from a couple different places. We have to call the pop-up when we receive data back from the server, and we have to call the pop-up here. And so what we've done is abstracted that, that code and put it down here in a pop-up function where we're asking for what words do we want to say and what color. We set the inner HTML for the words, and here we are setting the color on the, on the background there. We're also making sure we see this pop up, and we're adding a listener that when we mouse down anywhere on the document, so anywhere we mouse down, 
we're going to pop up. Uh, well, oh, we close it, right, it's already popped up. So anytime we mouse down, we close it, we set the display none, and we remove the, uh, the event listener that we just made there. So tidy up our event listener. So that's the function that will do the pop up. Let's come on up. And that happens if we have nothing in there. All right, so now we're ready to use our Ajax. And here it is. But where did that come from? That That's not built into JavaScript. It's a, an a Well, it is built into JavaScript, but uh, it, there there's a few steps to it. It's a little complicated looking. So most of the time we use an Ajax library or um, a script here. So we have done that. Let's have a look at where that is. We'll scroll up. Sorry, I don't want to make you sick. And we scroll down. There we go. You feel better now? <laughs> up, down, up, down. In, out, in, out, up, down, up, down. Okay, so there it is right there. There's the script calling out to ajax.js. And this is uh, just a script we found on a web years and years ago. It actually, <laughs> well, anyway, we'll mention, mention it coming up. Uh, here it is. The That's the class, of the JavaScript class. And these are the methods that have been put on there. So uh, there's the send and callback and some properties and things like that. So you can see in here, it's a little bit, you know, ruggy, 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 and they're probably handling it for Internet Explorer 6 and... <laughs> Maybe not six. <laughs> Why did you say that? What was the last Internet Explorer you used? Eleven? <laughs> I can't remember. All right. So we don't want to do all that. And there's other famous libraries out there. For instance, jQuery has its own Ajax library. Zim's got an Ajax library, uh, etc. So uh, it, you know, use that. You probably don't need to do it manually yourself. Okay, great. So we bring that in. Come on back down. And I've uh, commented out this, or not commented, but like put in the Ajax and end of Ajax. I tend to do that in all my code so that I can quickly find where I'm calling to the server and not. Well, let's uh, move over a little bit here, shall we? All right. So there we are making a new uh, HTTP client object. So there's our Ajax object, we can call it, story and client. We're setting the request type to post, and here's that little story I wanted to tell you. I can't get get to working. I can't get get to work. <laughs> um, can't get get working. There we go. Uh, so I'm not sure what's wrong with that. It works with post just fine. Sorry to sorry to else. I'll include this in in the zip file. <laughs> And by the way, if you don't see the zip file there at the moment, we'll get it there soon. We're, we're working on it. I'm wanting to finish the videos and then we'll uh, post the zip on it. By the time you're seeing this, hopefully the, the link will be in the video to the zip file. And if not, it'll be there shortly. Uh, so we're going to send you faulty faulty software. How does that sound? We we took a look through the Zim version of Ajax and couldn't see anything wrong with this this remote Ajax library that we're using here on the HTML side. So I don't know what it was, but anyway, it could have just been me. Could have just been me. So we here, what we're doing is we're setting up our object. Then we are going to send information. So this stuff sending, and then we're going to receive a callback. So we get this function where we receive a callback function and get some result. Okay, so let's go up and take a look at how we did that. Um, we the information we're sending needs to be in URL uh, or sorry, um, uh, URL. It's got to be in CGI format, and it looks like this. So it's some name it would be a string. Some name equals a value ampersand uh, name two, or you could call it property two equals a value, etc. And on and on it goes. So you see what we've got there. We've got a name and a value, or a key and a value, or a property and a value, and uh, then another one here. Now the value cannot be value va 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 va. Or <laughs> see, there we go. Can't be that. Um, it would have to have little pluses in here. You might get away with it actually, but um, you have to have little pluses. And if we wanted to store an ampersand in this one, like, hey, and uh, Raj, there we go, or getting married, you know, that's the information we're sending or the data we're sending. If it had an ampersand in it, you can see what would happen. It would get mixed up with the splitting here and it would try and like split it there, but that's not where it wants to split. Ah, 
So we'd have to turn that into a percent, uh, I don't know what it is, percent 20, is it percent 26, I can't remember, some special character. So, uh, and these spaces should be here. So you'd end up doing that. Well, we don't want to have to do that. So what we do is we encode URI. So we're going to encode that, and we'd have to come out of our string. Let's get rid of these, these guys for now, and, and that one. So we come out of our string. Let's do it in this one. Out of our string here. We put a plus sign to concatenate, and we would, uh, I'm so used to saying URL encode, uh, but they, they decided not, this is what it would look like, URI encode. Yeah, that's what it would look like if it were that way. Yeah, we wouldn't need the plus signs in there at this point. Uh, this would also have to be a string. Um, urine. <laughs> like too many letters too close to urine, I think. So they decided not to, to do it this way. <laughs> I have empathy. And instead said encode URI. So perhaps it's a better, uh, better solution. So there it is. That's a JavaScript command that would encode. Now, if we know what we've got there, we, it would probably come from a variable. So var uh, val or whatever is equal to something in there, blah, 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 blah. And if uh, we had an ampersand in there, some bad character, you are, uh, you are encode URI val. Uh, then we would go back into the string plus and, and the quotes there so that the ampersand is good. Obviously, we don't want to URI encode the whole thing because it would turn the real ampersands into special characters. And we, uh, that we don't want that. So we want the ampersands to really be ampersands there. However, this value, we'd have to do the same thing. So what I would do is I would copy this whole thing right here, paste it in there, and this would be some other, some other variable coming in there. And you'd have this big long string. This is quite common. We've done it for years. This big long string then of a string and dropping out and you encoding URI and then more string, et cetera. And you can see that there'd probably be some room for error in here. So what we've done now instead is uh, we've used the ES6 backtick there or tilt or whatever you want to call that. That starts off our string and it allows us to template. It allows us to stick JavaScript right inside of our string. By starting the JavaScript with dollar sign underscore or dollar <laughs> dollar sign underscore, where did we get that one from? Uh, dollar sign squiggly bracket and then end of squiggly bracket. So this is the raw JavaScript in here. We could put things that return a, a value. You could put a variable in there. You could here we are encoding URI a variable, and we've done the same thing with the count here. Although the count, uh, the problem is, is the name. Somebody's typing in a name could have bad characters in it. That's why we're encoding URI. But the count is coming from a number stepper. Actually, that's not true. The HTML number stepper, you can start typing things that aren't numbers into it. So maybe, maybe we better keep that URI encoded. But if we knew we were getting specifically a number and nothing but a number, we could just not bother URI encoding. We could just count that like that. Counts dot value. Oh, that's another um, thing. I uh, The first time I did this, I forgot and just threw the name and the count and the color in there. Where did we get these things from? Let's review that. Here they are right here. So the, we're working with the name, the count, and the color. It's great. Oh, okay, great. We get those fields. So I came down here and I threw the fields in and I was getting results and going, what the heck is wrong with my results? Well, that's the, the reference to the tag. So we don't want to just send the reference to the tag. We want to, it's a form tag. So we want to get its value. It's an input uh, text field or whatever that one is. Dot value for each of these. So be careful there. And then the color, the colors dot value URI encoded on that too. And the end of our back tick. Nice, huh? So I'm not sure which one's easier. I, I'm happy just going something like, uh, what would that be? Name is equal to, watch what I do. Name is equal to, I put, well, let's see, we're in quotes. So start off with a quote, name is equal to. We come out of our quotes, we go plus plus, we come back, we go uh, and code URI, URI. We put whatever in here, we come back in, we put the ampersand, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, finish that. I'm happy 
typing that way too. I'm not sure which way is easier. Perhaps that's safer, I guess. <laughs> Maybe a little easier. Okay, anyway, on we go. We then call the make request method here on, on our Ajax object. We pass it the URL to the server script. Uh, that means, of course, we're going to, we can't run this locally because that's a local URL to PHP. So we have to make sure we upload this to the server. And then we pass it the string. If we wanted to, you could have taken all of that and thrown it right into here. But you know that, right? Okay, so what happens when and this sends the information off, but what happens when the information comes back? Right, sometimes, depending on your system, sometimes you pass in the callback function right here. That's quite common, callback, like that. And you say, all right, here's what I'm sending, and then I want to receive, or when, when we receive information, I want you to run this function right here. That's where it would go. Uh, in this one, we've set up the Ajax object, and that has a callback built into it in a sense. So the client.callback, is that's what's going to be called, and we're passing in the function that we want to run when it gets called back. We'll receive a result from the server, and we're going to go see the server side in just a second. There's really not much new on the server side, so it won't take uh, but a moment to look there. But we're going to get a result back that will either say thanks sport or some sort of oops error message. Uh, the reason why we're asking for for that and testing it is because we want to change the color of these um, of the pop-up windows. So we're calling our pop-up and we're passing in that result. Would be thanks. This is green. And else, if there's if it doesn't say thanks, that means it's an error. And we're going to pop up the message in yellow at that point. And that's the end of the Ajax. So that's not too bad, is it? Or is it? I don't know. First time I used it, I used to think, oh, this is all scary. And I used to put these things around it going, oh, warning, warning, scary. But uh, now that I've used it a few times, I'm going, what was the problem? You make an object, you send something, and you receive something. I'm doing that stuff all the time now. So it's, it's, I'm totally used to it. And you will too one day if you work a lot with data. <laughs> all right, let's pop on over to the PHP page here. We would uh, start our PHP. Now, no HTML needed here. Uh, in the results page, in the last one, go make sure if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen the results uh, page uh, example uh, a few videos ago, or maybe maybe even just the last video, yeah, the last couple videos, then please look at that because we talk about all of this stuff in it, and I'm not going to really talk about all of this stuff exactly here. We will do a quick review on it, I suppose. Um, so make sure you pop back and see those videos. Uh, in, the, in, the, in those videos, though, we started with some HTML because we were actually making a results page with some HTML. Here, we only have to carry, we only care about the data. So all we need to do is collect the data and send it back. Uh, nobody sees this. All yeah, right, so, but we still need to connect to our database. This is our way that we connect to the database. We collect the variables. In this case, we're collecting them as post rather than get. In the earlier versions, we were using get. Now, in the earlier versions, we probably should have changed them to post in the end. So if we were making that a final form, you probably want to use post. OK, so uh, that hides the data. So here we are collecting as post because that's what the Ajax was set up to do. And then we have the same query as last time where we're inserting into our table the following variables that we're collecting. The ID is auto incrementing, so we probably don't even need to pass that at all. And then we've got three uh, bound question marks here, because these ones come from the client, from the front end, and we don't know what's in them. So MySQLI is set up to bind those right here. So bind parameters, and it takes care of protecting, protecting your, your database. So there we are uh, putting our inputs into the query here, or into the statement. And then we say that they're a string, an integer, and a string. And we execute it. That adds it to the database. Now here, if, if we're successful in preparing that, then we echo thanks sport. So there's the thanks coming back, and that's all we do is just echo that. So you can just echo a string, even though it's Ajax with an XML on the end. It used to be we'd put XML in here, but we don't have to. 
Uh, we could put JSON in here. We can echo JSON. And as a matter of fact, in future uh, videos where we take a look at the Zim side, uh, our binding all uses JSON. So we'll, we'll see some JSON work in those future videos. So here we are echoing thanks and echoing oops. And there we go. What do you think? And we got a form, a form, form, form. Za, za, za. And let's see if this is entering. Za, 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 za. And submit. Boop. Thanks, sport. We'll go to our database. We'll hit browse and have a look. There they are. Za, 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 za. Uh, by the way, I did this uh, just recently and noticed that this rah, rah, you see how this is, oh, I can't see it now. Za, za, 105, 107. Huh. Maybe it organized itself. I swear there was one case where, oh, it was this one right here. Um, I had mentioned that I wasn't sure if the new entries in the database here in the table always went at the end. And they don't. I saw one where it didn't. Reginald went up in front of Dr. Abstract, but I entered Dr. Abstract before I entered Reginald. So I think it is sometimes it just pops into different places depending on what got deleted or not. And I, deleted a few of these and I think that's when it happened. <laughs> what an exciting way to end a video. <laughs> Ooh, look at this data, 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 data. All right, so uh, when we come back, we're going to take a look at how we did the same thing with um, on, the P, uh, on the Canvas side uh, with um, JSONP. So using JSON to send back and forth on the Canvas side. Isn't that exciting? So look forward to that. And until then, we'll, uh, we'll see you later, huh? See you next video. And this has been Dr. Abstract at uh, Creative Coding here. And so come on into zimjs.com slash slack and join us if you want to talk about any of these things. Have a great day or night. Ciao.